breaking news. The Rise is back. Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin, and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin, and today we were supposed to be talking about the Origin FX DCX Boost, but I am going to have to put that off for about a week because something happened this weekend that I am so excited about, I just had to share it with you now. Um, there is a type of pedal called a treble boost, and the treble boost is one of the most fascinating effects out there for anybody who's a fan of Queen you will know the sound of a treble boost because Brian May used them on so many of their recordings. Um, it was just insane. Basically, what it started out as, there was an old pedal called the uh, Dallas Range Master. There's been several different variations of it. Um, they used to be amp talk boxes like this that would sit on top of your amp, and you plug it in, and, and it usually had one or two knobs on it that would boost the treble levels of your signal. So uh, when you're playing guitar and you want your signal to cut through the mix, the best way to do that is to add more treble to it. Um, this also became really, really important as more and more players started using humbuckers because humbuckers naturally were a little bit muddier and a little bit darker than the traditional single coils from like a Strat or a Telecaster. So people who were playing Les Pauls a lot would like a treble booster because it would help them to kind of get their sound up there a little bit and cut through the mix a little bit easier. Now, fast forward a few years, suddenly there becomes pedal formats of those. And almost all of the pedal formats are similar to like the Mythos Cestos, one of my favorite ones, or Cestos, one of my favorite ones. It's usually a one knob uh, with a switch on it, or sometimes there'll be a little bias control, like uh, Spruce FX has a little bias control on there. But essentially what you're doing is this is gonna control the amount of treble that you boost. And then this will change either the diodes that you're using. This is another one. Um, very, very, very common format to these. They're all great, they're, they're, if used correctly, sometimes you can get fuzzy tones out of them, so some people will use them as a fuzz pedal, but most of the time what you're doing is you're using that toward the end of your chain to try and push, say, a, a drive pedal to give it more trouble, to balance things out. Several years ago, Jesse Davey introduced a pedal called the Rise. And the Rise was his version of a treble booster, and it was fascinating because it was all germanium diode based. And it had four knobs. The first time I had seen a treble boost with four knobs and a, a couple switches on it. And it was fascinating because it seemed to give you way more control. Problem is, is they sold out immediately and then just kind of disappeared. A few have popped up on the used market. Um, most recently, some have been selling or uh, listed on Reverb for over $2,000 because it was just a really short run pedal for Jesse. Well, Got a phone call yesterday, and my friend Brian over in Lawrence said, hey, we just got this in, you gotta come check this out. So I ran over there, and it turned out Jesse has re-released the Rise. But this time made it several improvements to it that are going to be absolutely huge. First and foremost, they added in germanium and silicone diodes, so you can actually switch between, and they moved some dip switches to the side of the pedal to make it more functional. Effectively, they have just outdone that original rise by leaps and bounds but don't take my word for it let's hop over to the pedal board and take a look at this and see how it works all right so today what i'm going to do is i'm going to be using my rock and roll relics heartbreaker guitar this has two humbuckers in it and the humbuckers on this are a little bit darker than all the other humbuckers that i have in my guitars so this one tends to be just a little bit bassier and less troubling <laughs> So there's still a little bit of snap to the treble, but it's just, it's a little bit darker than what I would traditionally play inside of a humbucker. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what the Rise does. First of all, there's four knobs here instead of the usual one or two that you would normally see on a treble boost. So you have a drive knob, a volume knob, a glass knob, and a tone knob, and then this three-way switch down here for that says fuzz full, vintage, and overdrive. Now this is going to change the way that the actual unit 
reacts to your playing and will change the overall sound slightly. It's it's going to be kind of cool. And it's hard to demo this on a video, but we're going to try. Um, but on the side of the pedal, and I'm going to show you the box here because there's a little uh, uh, picture of the dip switches. There's also dip switches on the side of the box that allow you to change what transistors are being used. Typically, and on the original Rise, Jesse had used germanium transistors, which are quieter, a little bit softer sounding, can be a little bit more reactive to heat and temperature, but they usually have a really, really classic sound to them. But in this pedal, he also added a set of silicone transistors, which tend to be a little bit more modern and a little bit brighter sounding. So they have this really, really cool, uh, just clean boost sound to them that is out of this world. I'm gonna show you both so you can hear the difference here, but right out of the gate, that should tell you, there's automatically a ton of versatility with this pedal versus a standard treble booster. You've got two full sets of transistors in here. You've got a lot of different options. So let's see what all of those do. So we're gonna start off, we've got this in germanium mode and I'm gonna walk you through some of the sounds and let you hear what it sounds like. Okay, so here's our clean tone. Cool, all sounds good. Let's go with the rise on now. Now you can instantly hear just a little bit of extra. See how that? It's automatically making that treble come through just a little bit stronger. Now, what you've got with your pedals here, you've got the drive knob, the drive, if we crank this all the way up. It's not like an overdrive sound. It's not cranking you into a distortion level. What it's really doing is just giving you a little bit more push to the treble so it can push your amp into overdrive if you're right on the edge of breakup. The volume knob will also increase your volume. So as we bring this up, you're gonna hear. So those two together really can push you into that edge of breakup. You can hear it on my amps now that I'm pushing it a little bit more. Now we're starting to drive them. We're starting to push them over the edge. And there's a, a pretty drastic volume boost there. So for what I want to do right now, I'm going to try to set it up. Kind of right in there so that I'm... There we go. Now I'm not getting a major volume boost. I'm more getting that treble pushing through. And then we're going to demonstrate the tone knob. Now the tone knob is interesting because the middle position is just leaving your tone kind of as is. And just bringing up the treble. The more we bring this up, the more treble it's going to push. Turn it all the way down. We can make it muddier. Now this is gonna come in very important in a few minutes when we stack the gain and we push another overdrive pedal into this. You're gonna see how that tone knob can really come into play to tame this. Because the thing with treble boosters is when you run them at the end of your signal chain, a lot of times if you've got other gain pedals in there that are already boosting the treble a little bit and making those treble frequencies a little higher, say like uh, in a good king of tone or in a clon type clone or even in a tube screamer you're already increasing the gain of the treble so by putting a treble booster at the end sometimes it can make that shrill and harsh that tone knob can make a world of difference we'll see how that works and then the glass knob is very interesting the glass knob allows you to dial in the way the transistor reacts when you have it all the way up it's giving you a really nice, clean smoothness. And I want you to listen really closely as I turn this. I'm gonna leave it in the middle here. In the background, you can hear the hiss of the amp, right? Watch what happens. See how that hiss lowered a lot as I moved it forward in the glass?
there's your magic knob. And this is something that other treble boosters just can't get quite to where this is. This is the part that makes me absolutely Twitter-pated with this fuzz. What the glass knob allows you to do is actually tweak that transistor all the way down where you can open it up and create a fuzz tone. <laughs> And you can tame it just a little bit by bringing it up. And if we move the modes over, like over to vintage. And then into overdrive. Back to vintage. Back to full fuzz. So this little switch right there and that glass knob play a massive world of difference in how this impacts your tone. The further you have it to the right, the more you are just kind of isolating the treble and pushing it forward. When you have it toward the middle, you're really just pushing those trebles up. and not really affecting the deeper notes hardly at all. When we take this down. I love that spitty kind of gain there that you get with the geranium. So that's the real beauty of this. This is so much more than just a traditional treble boost. You've got a lot more going on here. Now I'm gonna mess with the dip switches on the side. We're gonna switch it over to silicone mode. Sorry, this takes just a second. Okay, now that the silicone's on the germanium, you're gonna notice immediately if I leave it in those exact same settings, when I turn this off, it's gonna be, or turn this on, it's gonna be way louder than what it was. And when I clean this up a little bit. Go to vintage and then to overdrive. And then the more we bring this up, take it back to vintage. And back to fuzz full. totally off. So see how much more tone that imparts into there. And when we just leave it normal, when we kind of clean it up, kind of leave it around the one to two o'clock position on all the knobs. You really don't have to do as much. It's not pushing it into drive territory, it's just bringing all those treble frequencies up and making them sound really, really cool. So that's great, this is super fun. I think this is, just with those settings alone, the fact that this is a $250 pedal, no brainer. Most of the, the treble boosters that I've shown you all are in that $250 to $300 range. Some of the old classic ones are in the $400 all the way up into the $1,000, $1,500 range for a Dallas Range Master. And I'll tell you, I've played Dallas Range Masters. I love them, but this can do about everything that that can and 10 times more. So I'm super, super impressed with that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Mythos Mjolnir, the GE edition, because that's a little bit darker, deeper drive. And I want you to hear what that sounds like with it being run into the rise. So we're gonna make the rise at the end of that stack. So let's do the GE first. <laughs> you 
can hear, a little bit darker drive, not super trebly. Now, we've still got this in silicone mode. Keep that in mind. I'm going to switch back to germanium in a second. But in silicone mode, let's hit it again. <laughs> Go with a vintage. Without the rise. switch over to germanium and see what happens is now we're going to be stacking germanium with germanium i think this is going to get very interesting when we do that all right so now g again <laughs> I said this earlier, the tone knob. See, by backing off that tone a little bit, we're taking some of that treble boost out. If we push it back up. Especially when we get over into full fuzz territory. Now what we're going to be doing, especially if we get it like over here. We can turn this down a little bit. Back in a vintage. And then all the way over. And then just for grins, let's add a little delay. And then without the rise going. That thing just makes everything sound better when you put this behind it. It is an absolute miracle box. Okay, so this might be the easiest verdict I've ever had to come up with on this show. What do I think of this? This should be in every single guitarist toolkit, period. I think this needs to be at the end of every drive chain. And... I, I'd almost venture to say it's an always on pedal, but I, I'm going to say if you're playing into like something like a box AC 15, maybe a victory copper, something that's already a little bit more trebly or already has a treble boost built into it. Um, maybe not an always on pedal because you don't want to get too much trouble where it gets ice picky and overload your ears. You definitely still need to make sure you're EQing it correctly, but my gosh, every drive pedal that I've run into this. And I know in this video, we just did one, um, but I, I've been playing with it for a couple of hours now, and I've ran probably 20 different drive pedals into it, and it has not failed to make any of them sound better. From classic old fuzzes to modern day distortions, I'm blown away. This is truly one of the best, no, it's the best treble booster I think I've ever played. Um, hands down, I, I am so impressed. 
I don't even know what transistors are in it. I haven't cracked it open yet. I didn't want to blow the magic of this. So um, I'm not one of those guys that really cares. Does, does it have to be a classic OC44 or OC71? I don't care. To me, it's about the sound. And that is what this thing delivers in spades. The sound is amazing. And the fact that you can tweak it so much that you can really dial it in to your amps, to your specific setup, that to me is priceless. Where, where classic... Uh, all of these old school treble boosters, they're fantastic. And don't get me wrong, this thing is magical and it sounds amazing. And it can get louder than the, the Rise can. Um, but you're still limited by just one knob and a, a switch on transistors. You just don't have the customization, the full tweaking that you can do. Um, for somebody looking for a specific classic tone, not a problem. These will probably deliver in spades and may be the better option for that. But for an everyday use, you just want to make your tone sweeter and better and make your drive pedals come out the best they possibly can in the mix. The Rise is the way to go. I, I'm, I'm so impressed. Jesse, you nailed this. You're a freaking genius. I am so excited. And I love that he added this silicone. I think it's like, I, I, I feel bad for the people who have these and have been trying to sell them for $2,000, the old models, because there's just no reason. I've heard the demos of the old models. It, the germanium side sounds like this and the silicone side gives you a whole other addition. So there's no reason to go buy the old model. I, I would literally pick up the new model for a tenth the price that the old ones are, are being priced at on Reverb, um, hands down. It's just a no brainer. That is the way to go. Okay, enough of me gushing about this pedal. I'm sorry I interrupted our regularly scheduled program and I pushed back the DCX Boost demo till next week. I'm excited about the DCX Boost still. It's still an awesome pedal, but my gosh, this was something so special and so amazing. I wanted to make sure everybody got to see it this week and that you knew about them because I know they're launching this week. So now's the time to go snag one. I'm sure they're going to sell quickly once they, they get out there in the market and people start realizing what they are. So just wanted to give everyone a heads up. As always, thanks to my friends for Palin for having me on this week. I really appreciate you supporting the show. And uh, please go visit them on their website. I'll put a link down below. And uh, make sure if you uh, happen to be on Instagram, go follow me over there at What's This Button Do Dustin. I'd love to hear your feedback. Anybody who goes out and gets one of these rises, or if you have an original, love to hear your comments down below, especially if you're familiar with the whole treble boost circuit. Would love to see how you think it compares and uh, what kind of tones you're getting out of it. Love to hear all of the news and notes down below. So please comment down below and let us know. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you next week to look at that Origin DCX boost. In the meantime, have a great week. We'll see you soon.